So we're getting some serious fixing and repairing on the race cars. <laughs> Only the finest of repairs here. The best of quality of masking. Hey, 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 hey. This mask, we're masked up. Yeah, we're I'm wearing good. a mask. Yeah, you're wearing a mask. Yeah, we have bar plastic. mask. Got our, uh, our new bash bar end plates welded on there. I'm getting the Dodge 100% updated too. I know you guys have seen some of the updates and upgrades we've been doing on this one. Fresh K&N filter going in here. We also got a new brake system going on. We are feeling pretty good about all of that. New bearings going in the rear, so. Bit of a overhaul that it's been needing for a minute because, eh, let's just say the brakes weren't that great. The bearings, since we're in there, Jackson was telling me you gotta take the whole rear end apart, you know, pulling the hubs off and everything to get the rotors swapped. So while we're at it, some fresh bearings on the back to make sure that we're good for the next lap. And otherwise, yeah, we got Tanner out here. Whoa, it's bright out. We got Tanner helping out with uh, getting our trailer tires up and off. You know, some of them look good, but some of them are yeah. are really starting to look pretty spotty so you know the best the best move is to just replace all of them at once you don't want to risk it and be like oh well you know let's just change the two that look bad leave the other four that look okay it's good to just keep them on a on a good cycle we got a little trick here to get the trailer up so we got all six wheels up and off the ground tanner busted those off and we're going to take those over to get some fresh gt radials mounted up uh, as we get ready for our atlanta loop it is uh a lot of bad attitude badass truck trailer repair going on around here <laughs> Bad attitude repairs. Yeah, dude. So it's definitely all the fun stuff, all the glorious, wonderful upgrades that, uh, well, actually, well, this is pretty glorious, our new Warren Motor Lights, but all of our other glorious upgrades that we get to do on the rigs, the trailers, and everything to make sure that we are good to go all the way across the country because the one thing that we get to do with Formula Drift that most of the other series around the world don't have to do is travel thousands of miles so we put uh you know thousands of miles between fd rounds you know going from socal to atlanta and then up to new jersey and out to seattle and big loops plenty of trailers have broken down on the way in route trucks breaking down turbos blowing up trailers getting flats just all those little things that can really ruin your weekend especially if you are running late let's say so if you have a mechanical on your truck or trailer you have to fix that like asap in like hours because the event's going to go on without you so I've definitely been in a situation where, you know, I'm on the side of the road cutting an old bearing off that burned up and chewed up on my toter and had to fix it and knock a new one on and barely made it to the race on time. So that's the type of stuff we want to avoid. So preventive maintenance is great. And um, little upgrades here and there on the race car. Yeah, nothing like a little bit of fresh steel it going on there. Those and then our, right. yeah, and our other little upgrade, we're gonna finally get the cool suit back into the car because it gets way too hot out on that east coast for the summer swing and the way we're going to offset the weight since we pulled so much weight out of the car uh, the way that we are helping to offset that weight is with our fresh optima lithium batteries so we got the orange tops the quad 30s and we're actually going to run a pair of them like this it's going to take up the same amount of space as a single red top but it's going to weigh one third as much so we're going from a 47 pound battery down to a pair of seven to eight pound batteries, putting us at like, you know, 16 pounds or so. The battery trays are gonna basically neglect each other out. And so we're saving almost 30 pounds out of the back of the car, which is fantastic to also go to two batteries as well. So huge upgrade, dual batteries, twice the cranking amps, uh, twice the uh, longevity if we have an alternator failure. And also, uh, so it can maybe buy us a run if we do have that alternator failure. Because in the past, we've been knocked out in the finals with Matt Field in New Jersey, 2022 with an alternator failure. We um, had a alt failure in uh, our first qualifying pass in Irwindale last year, which put us in that bottom eight because it you know, lost, lost the power, lost the power steering and everything mid run. Um, those are things that we want to avoid. So, so this will be a nice upgrade. And then that's going to lose 30 pounds off the back end, which we're going to make back up with about 20 pounds worth of that cool suit. So we're still going to get a weight reduction and I'm going to be a lot more comfortable, which is nice because it gets real freaking hot out there. I think that's going to be great. It's going to help me a lot because uh, like I would basically only sit in the car when I had to versus getting into the car to cool down. So it's nice to have that. Um, we were just running so heavy last year. I opted to leave the cool suit out. That's not really practical or ideal. Staying in the car, staying focused, 
staying cool. It's very, very important. So all going back in. Yeah. We're going through, we're getting books for every vehicle and writing down all the things that we're doing to them to keep better track of all the service that we're doing to them. Got the new filter on there. Yeah. So uh, new hands for Jackson. New hands for Jackson. Yeah, we got some new GT radios coming for us. Uh, they're being loaded onto the trailer. So these are good for now. They're starting to just roll over a little bit. We want to get ahead of it. Getting everything finalized and loaded up. Cool suit's about going in. Here we got our wicked new lithium dual battery mount done. Freaking stoked on that. Fresh paint. Fresh paint. Fresh paint. New tail lights, new setup. So yeah, going all back together again. I think Jackson's going to take this hot rod for its uh, little maiden voyage here. Make sure the brakes break and uh, the exhaust exhausts. So. <laughs> And yeah, the exhaust works, that's for sure. Yeah. Gonna check out these brakes next. Confirmed. <laughs> yeah. That's yep. the that's the next big thing. Eight lug nuts on all the wheels now. So yeah, that's good. Put it broken. Dude. I just had the absolute wildest stage off there. What? Just like, now? Oh yeah. Just that, that like, right like there? just yeah. I can't even tell you what it was. Because <laughs> that's the whole thing. That's like the whole thing about it you can't figure it out yeah, but like yeah, I, just, I just got fully sapped top to bottom you've already lived this moment before all, all that means is that you're in a good spot yeah that's all that means you're on the right track yep things are good things are great so it's always a good feeling i love that just like but oh, no it's not a good feeling huffing out the whole shop with diesel yeah, let's move not, this rig <laughs> let's get this here. thing going all right all right no, not a care in the world looking good girl all right, so on that note, everything is good and ready to go. The boys are going to load up the car tomorrow. And yeah, Dodge is looking good, feeling good. So just get that thing hooked up to the trailer, put the race car in, and off to Atlanta. So super pumped. Road Atlanta is one of my absolute favorite tracks. It was the first Formula Drift event. And we finished second place, went all the way to the finals. And then 20 years later, we backed it up with going all the way to the finals again with Vaughn Gittin Jr. last year. So absolutely amazing track i love it we've, we've got like almost 10 podiums at that track in the past 20 years so definitely one of my faves looking forward to the weekend and yeah otherwise feeling really good car's awesome it's dialed in the weather looks great so see you guys in atlanta So it is day one of Road Atlanta and it is a little wet, a little miserable out here. We got our rain shoes on, but it's going to be a interesting day because we actually go out on track, not first, but we go out early today, get a couple practice laps in. We're gonna be running our wet setup. And then from there, we have a huge break until we actually go back on for our warm up, right? Which would be the warm up before the seating bracket. We don't have to run the seating bracket due to our position, so that's great. Today's just a practice day for us, making sure our boy Alex Jager's dialed in as well. He also does not have to do today's seating bracket. He's set in for competition tomorrow. So we're looking good, he's looking good. And yeah, we're just going over the car real quick, making sure that we're dialed, getting our gear ratio set, doing our shock click outs, and just making sure we are 100% dialed. But for the day, we're not gonna be setting up our entire pit because like I said, it's a hot mess, it's raining, it's pouring. Yeah, I actually uh, just pulled the camera out now because we've been kind of hiding from the rain this whole time. So we're about to get ready to go, get this thing fired up and tuned up and see how she does out there for those few warm up laps, practice laps for us uh, in the wet and then we'll get some in the dry later today. See, uh, in case you didn't believe me, it was raining or not. Freaking doors full of water, bud. The hell? <laughs>
one lap and basically shaking all the you know dust off the car, getting going. And then there was like a big wreck, a couple other people went off, just a big mess out there the whole time. So we only got two laps. So now we have like a six hour gap, looks like, until we go out again. It's supposed to be dry, so I'm just marking down the things that we did since we were running in full wet and then what we're changing to and the full dry. We're assuming it's gonna be full dry, it's still very wet. I got my, my wet shoes on, but we're good. So yeah, I mean otherwise the car's good, just a couple little things to finish up and yeah, I'm just going through the data. I am putting the sway bar back on. So we had the front sway bar off because it was raining. And now we're putting it back on. It's looking at it now. Yeah, this, this is my first viewing of our yeah, the Nismo billet strut tire brace. It's so sick. It's actually, what was it, three pounds lighter? Yeah, it was three, so, three and a half pounds, yeah. Three and a half pounds lighter than the factory steel one. Still has some adjustability to fit any chassis to like slot it on the one side. It's like a three piece design. To, uh, such a cool looking piece. Definitely ties all the billet together. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Cool. Like it, it certainly helps with the billet intake manifold, billet valve covers <laughs> to not have a black steel <laughs> yeah, strut right on top. top. So solid upgrade. Seen Chris out there killing it. You seen him? Oh, dude, freaking <laughs> sick. His rain lap, his dry laps, he listens. Nick, I'm his spotter. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, ran into Chris, hung out with Chris a ton in Long Beach. He called me a little bit ago and was like, Hey, man, you know all that stuff you're talking in Long Beach? Come hang out at the trailer and spot for me. Couldn't say no. Now we're here. We just got through first practice. Uh, well, I should say second practice, but the first real dry practice of the day. It's Thursday. Now we'll break for Friday and we'll be back on Saturday. Yeah, and he brings a really awesome perspective and very detailed in the driving aspect, which I really like. You know, just being like, you know, I want you to focus on this clip and you know, lock the steering wheel. Like, don't correct. Do this. Do that. And just like being very uh, informative of how the car looks from the outside, which you know, I think is really helpful. And 
I think like it's funny because it completely like changed my approach to the way we set up the car and drove the car all day and it was like just buttery smooth but still super fast. Yeah dude. So, Sick. Yeah, I didn't it was know awesome. all that. <laughs> but, yeah, like um, I mean I was watching like uh, the in car and like you said you're like transfer into two and just lock that wheel down. That thing was just doing this all the way up the hill. Just yep. freaking yep. in. Yeah, and I mean, I'm, I'm up there watching the class, so I can see the class go from one to switch back to two, and they're all throwing too much angle. Then they pull the angle out, and they make a correction, right? So it's like, Chris's goal to stand out would be to not do that. So sometimes when we're, when we're fucking drifters, right, it's like we want to throw a mad angle everywhere. But if I can get him to kind of stay aware enough to, to walk his angle into sections, he becomes smooth, and that's what I noticed today. It was really smooth, you know? So we're at the end of day one, Thursday, and the car is just absolutely ripping. Feels amazing. Just loving the setup that we have in it. Not loving that we're missing the taillight, but that's okay. It's got a little deep into outer zone two up at the top of the keyhole, but otherwise the car is just overall ripping. Really happy with how we have it set up. We tried a couple things to find some speed, but also trying to stay very smooth with the car. We don't want to hurt the quality of the run just for some speed in the car. So making sure that we still have some nice control of the car, keeping a good angle. We're not chopping at the wheel too much. And I'd say that we achieved that. So feeling really, really good. Now we're just watching some of the seated or seating qualifying, if you will, the uh, tandem brackets. So watching some of our boys go through to battle in so they can run with us on Saturday. So otherwise, feeling awesome. Just gonna clean this car up and we'll see you guys then. Try to help with the mosquitoes and the juju. But yeah, after a nice wet day in Atlanta uh, and the sun comes out, so do the Skeeters. So this is great. To yeah. The bay. Helps block them out. And then, you know, the white sage is very healing, good vibes, calm. Jagger will lead. We've got another driver that's locked and loaded here into our 32. Looking good in practice, Jared. Let's see what happens. All right. Well, it's Jager coming down. And that steel of coating, Nissan 370Z. Abe back there quite a bit. And that has chassis. All right, now coming up is Alex Jager. Oh, and Jake, oh wow. Absolutely gets aggressive there. On that second outside zone, Jager. And it looks like Havik is struggling there in the chase position. And there you go, that was a that was a textbook lead run there from Alex Jager. Helix Coatings, all new livery here for him. But uh, we'll see if Havik brings it back because you can recall Jager did have a really good clean run here. You said you wanted a little more flair there. <laughs> we'll see uh, We'll see if he brings it here. But Havoc looks like he gets disrupted by the rumble strip. But Jager, ooh, Havoc, wide swing around that second inside clip into the horseshoe. Now exiting out of the horseshoe. Ton of smoke here. And uh, Jager looks like he's kind of steering clear and keeping it close. He knows, you know, that strategy. And that new steel of coatings, Dove Gray looking livery. And it looks like Jager gets the win unanimously. As we are at top six opening ceremonies here at FD Road Atlanta. Round one of the Link ECU Pro Spec Formula Drift Championship. Debuting a brand new color with steel it coatings called Dove Gray. It's kind of white, it's kind of gray. Either way, it's all cool. So, you know, I'm excited about to get into battle. I think I'm like the second battle up or something. So, I have to get right back up there and then come right back down to race. I am battling Austin Mata today in the top 16. I feel pretty good. We battled before a couple times. Um, both times at New Jersey, ironically, my home track. First year we did it, it was 2021, I lost to him. Second year we battled, it was 2022, I beat him. So we got one versus one, 
So it'd be cool to battle him here in a totally different atmosphere, but just to see. I know his car is very fast, makes a lot of power, a lot of grip. I like that because I like a lot of power and a lot of grip too. It's kind of a weird subject in prospect, but he likes to go fast, I like to go fast, and that's all that matters. Austin Mono will lead. Alex Jager in the chase position. Austin coming down, kind of slow way under. Look how much squat that SS has. <laughs> You talked about it earlier about the track gripping up. So slide him left for Mata or right for Alex Jager gets the win. Alex gets the win and advances on into the great eight. TBD on who he's going against, Rahimi or Rawlings. Alex Jager, Hoover Rahimi. There it is, burning off the line. Hoover Rahimi, but Jager, uh, and, and my prediction, he's going to level up each round that he advances. Here goes Jager, steal it. Into that second outside zone, Hoon Rahimi taking a shallower line. Alex Jager just absolutely on one right now. Just on rails. Absolutely on rails. Ooh. Yeah, I mean that, I mean you couldn't get you couldn't put a piece of paper between the nose of that Z and those inside clips. But I, I would have thought. And uh, there he goes, a side skirt in the face of Alex Jager. He kind of backs off a little bit. Maybe he tuck it in the smoke. Hoover Rahimi coming up a bit short on the second outside zone on the second tally mark. Coming back down the hill, you can hear him on that rev limiter. Oh, losing parts left and right. Left for Jager, right for Rahimi, who's going to the final four. It is Alex Jager. Alex Jager unanimously gets the win. SRD, Nissan, 350Z. Now here comes the Nissan Z, the steal it of Alex Jager into that first inside clip. Chopped and screwed, and here comes Alex Jager up the hill. Buchanan turns it up in that first outside zone. Here comes Jager into that second outside zone. Tucks in is Alex Jager on that second inside clip. Now transitioning through, flirting with the edge of the course. Here comes Buchanan back down the hill. Great angle from Buchanan, and Jager puts a bow on it. Chasing down Buchanan. Who's going against TLO in the finals? Alex Jager, Cody Buchanan. One vote for Buchanan, one vote for Jager. And Alex Jager, 2-2-1. Two, two, one. One Formula Drift, Bruce Beck, brought by Link Engine Management. Alex Jager out front, TLO in the chase position. You want some flair? Let's see if Alex Jager's got it here in the finals. This is when he needed to do it. Turn it up all the way. Steal it. Dub Gray, Livery, TLO chasing him down. Into that second outside zone. He hits it and quits it. Alex Jager dialed in very tight on that second inside clip. TLO, he cuts the corner on exit. Now coming back out into that final inside clip. Well done by both of them. Yeah. Okay, let's send it. Potentially one last time. TLO, the crews are hyped, they're ready, they're cheering them on. Who's gonna get it? There is Drifter Jay. Happy birthday, 16 years old. He's cheering on his Canadian confidant, who is leading the pack right now. Alex Jager chasing him down. In that first inside clip, good initiation. Had by TLO. Alex Jager might have overcooked it. Gets in the kitty litter a little bit. He has to fall back. TLO into that first outside zone. Going to the second outside zone. Jager could catch up. He compromised going out there, but he gets that proximity into that second inside clip. Now, track reference, he knocks it over just like TLO did. Now coming into that final inside clip, Alex Jager, he takes it out. Wow. That was... That was aggressive. It was wild. It's exactly what we anticipated. Can I get that light? I'm putting it. Yeah, That's where we're going. No, we're going. Impressive for eight people. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. This thing's ripping. No, we got nine. Dude. Nine. 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 <laughs> Yeah, Sorry. Second place. This is my best finish in FD. Uh, it's my fourth season, so it feels really good to have another podium. Um, this is two podiums in a row at Atlanta, which is awesome for me. Um, I love this track. It fits my driving style. It fits the car super well. Um, thank God to Chris, who is so successful at this track, to give me a good setup to put in the car, um, so that we come out here and kill it every year that we come. 
Um, loving it. The car looks great. Driver feels great. It's a great way to start the season. Let's see if we can carry the momentum. Get in there. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Thank nice you. Work. It felt good. Car felt great. Yeah. Dude, it felt. We felt so good running up through the bracket and stuff, and the car was just dialed. We didn't make almost any changes. Really. Good. Um, we put a little bit more empty up to do as fast, but against my wishes, James wanted to put a little more than we did in, and we should have because this car was that fast. But uh, it was just so much fun. It felt great. Out there, honestly. It felt so no, you were, you were just as quick as if you caught them. Yeah, I kept surprised by that, honestly. But yeah, so much was, I felt so good in Outer Zone 2 most of the day, and then it just kept like, as soon as it got dark, I don't know if it messed with my depth perception and stuff, but I felt like I was flying off the track. Yeah. And she was like, you're not even there, dude. And I'm like, you were, you were like on the line. You're like yeah. online every time, which is good. Yeah. 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 So whatever. The hard felt amazing. Yeah. Not a scratch on the thing. It's a whole day. Fucking <laughs> sick. Wipe the dirt off, put it in the trailer. That's fucking sick, dude. Who wants a set? Tail light dies and another one is born. Just like that. There you go. <laughs> so our current situation is we're setting up a birthday for Lid. So her birthday is on May 4th. So we want to make her real special. So we're in the race crowd drag, so uh, these boys are helping me get this all ready. Now I gotta try to go and ninja this somehow into the trailer. Perfect. Alright, let's do it. Good oh, work, yeah. bud. Oh, yeah. Good work, bud. Like, yeah, it's like, like hair on that wall would be sick. Okay. So I'll just keep her distracted up here. Okay. Teamwork, bud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which way did you come? <laughs> no, we definitely cheated, but we well, we went to the pit early, but we went there because all of our stuff was up here. Yeah, everybody else. And then I saw a car start moving, so I got in line. Yeah. Oh, already up here. So oh, like, yeah. yeah, exactly. That breaks the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were just standing as soon as you heard me go, what, what, what? Yeah. Right. Right. Well, we, I, that's I why, we, because we didn't pull all the way up to the starting oh, line, no. I think we're safe. That's true. Yeah, that's what we're yeah. for. You we were like, eh. Six. I know. Turk stopped here and I was like, is this as far as we're going? He's like, I'm too scared to go any further. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Stop short. Fair. Be fair. Like, this is actually yeah, see, we're not in line yet. We're not. Officially not. I should not. just drive around you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you can.
see Matt Soap on a rope, but keeping it clean. Sending it for Chris the fourth board. But let's lay out for this three-time champ piloting the NOS Energy Drink all-new Nismo Z. Woo! All right, so there it is, a buy run. Unfortunately, Taylor Hole has to retire after a DNS did not start. So uh, unfortunately for Hole, he is out. Now right <laughs>
judges analyze to see if they can assess fault here, not just for this, but also for a timeout. So this is the part we want to look at right here. Oh, Rome does dive in. It does look like Rome gets back on throttle before Chris does. Now the question becomes, should Chris have already been on the throttle at that point in time? There are a lot of ways we can look at this. Excel, decel area, that is not a decel area, but you have a natural kind of swing going yeah. into that inside clip. Taking a look at the map, you know, you see the red going, fading in, so basically like, and then you kind of power yeah. out, um, outer zone one, but where they have the contact, you can see inner clip two in that keyhole coming out, uh, coming down the horseshoe from outer zone one, outer zone two into inner clip two. Yeah, there's, in my mind, there's two ways you can look at this. Rome dove in, before Chris was fully transitioned, and that's where the contact was made. And then the other way is that Chris was too slow transitioning, and Rome did not anticipate it in time. Well, the plot thickens here. Man, this oh. is going to be one heck of a and To win here, Atlanta, it's a bragging right thing. This is our iconic. going into top 16 with the team and Chris dialed good vibes all around lots of I don't know things and stuff yep. Jackson did to the car yep. <laughs> cars good cars fast <laughs> yes cars fast uh, got a great battle coming up with Rome uh, you know it's pretty consistent dialed driver had a interesting wreck with Higa a little earlier so maybe he's not 100 percent but you know I think Chris can put it on him and uh, see how see how we do him keep pushing through because it's not a deceleration zone, and he just kind of plows into him. So he's yeah, expecting it, him to be on gas, going through it, and continuing out the keyhole, and he just doesn't do that. All right, so Rome Sharpens here. You mean Interclip 2, of course. Oh, sorry, yeah, Interclip yeah, no problem. Interclip 2, it seemed that he checked up. So take a look at it here. RCP gets the win, but let's analyze this again. So Forsberg goes up to outer zone 1, yep. goes in outer zone 2, okay? And then when he goes into Interclip 2, you'll see him check up. And right there, Boom. his car just kind of pauses it or cuts off or something, but definitely decels, and then Rome has nowhere to go but into the back of him. All right, so a bit of a roadblock there for RCP. So watch this once again. Again, all the angles. It wasn't telling with the naked eye, and I, I honestly, like I said, it didn't sound 100%. You can hear, and then bang. Yeah. All right, roadblock, nowhere to go. As we are seeing Chris Forsberg, he is knocked out. We got knocked out. <laughs> uh, that's the long and short of it. Uh, Rome had hit us and caused uh, Chris to miss a shift. Uh, and then the blame fault on Chris for slowing up. That's good. Oh, all good. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah. That's all good. 